time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the art. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is David Ross. May I introduce our co editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope, Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Richard Waddell, management editor of Business Week magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Clifford Case, United States Representative from New Jersey. Mr. Case, many of our viewers, of course, know that you are a veteran congressman from uh, Rawway, New Jersey. You've been in Congress since 1944, haven't you? That's right. And uh, particularly during the last few weeks, You've been a part of Operation Commodore. You've been a part of these uh, people who've been sitting down in the Commodore Hotel and uh, getting the new administration ready to uh, take over. Now, sir, there's a lot of public interest in, in what you've been doing at the Commodore. And the first question is this, sir. Is all of this organization work that you've been doing for the new administration, is this an unprecedented effort? Has it ever happened before? So far as I know, it is unprecedented. Uh, certainly nothing like this has happened uh, in the past 20 could, years. Could you give our viewers some indication of the size of the effort? How many people have been em employed in it? Uh, right now, I guess that we're about at the peak, and I think there's something like 125 people there altogether. Uh, the great bulk of, of, of that uh, consists of clerical help, uh, and then there are uh, several uh, people in a rather special category, like Hugh Scott and myself, uh, most of the rest of the uh, men are people who are going into the new administration. Now, now you've been, uh, everybody from General Eisenhower and Mr. Dulles on down, uh, 125 of you have been reporting there for work every morning since the election and, and working? Pretty much, you, pretty much. Your job, I understand, part of your job at least has been to uh, uh, collect some money to pay for this. Uh, yes, uh, that, uh, that... Who, uh, who will pay the final bill, or are the bills paid? Uh, they're not all paid, but they, I'm sure they all will be paid. Uh, we have had to raise money for this uh, for this headquarters. Uh, there isn't any federal appropriation for it, and it's an expensive thing to have uh, 55 rooms now. Are you and, in favor uh, of a federal appropriation for such a, a shift, uh, this in, uh, interim period? Well, there, there are various possibilities, it seems to me, and uh, they all ought to be explored. Uh, I'm not sure that <clears throat> I can see quickly any reason why there should be such a long delay between Election Day and Inauguration Day. Uh, and and uh, the purpose, of, of course, of the whole operation is to make this transition from one administration to another as smooth as possible without any lag. How much does the operation cost, sir? What's well, been the, the weekly cost of it? Uh, it has gradually increased as the president-elect uh, has named additional uh, people to his staff, and they have come to the headquarters and taken up their duties. Uh, right now, I expect it's something like in the neighborhood of $25,000 a week. And and how are you paying the 25000 now? How are you paying well, part of it? A, a considerable amount. Uh, I don't know exactly what it uh, would total. has been raised just by people who have sent in subscriptions, uh, uh, contributions, uh, knowing uh, that the organization is in existence and is needs there, funds. Is there any possible ground for criticism of such an operation or for financing it in such a manner? It seems to me that uh, there is no proper ground, and I've heard no suggestion of criticism. You haven't had any difficulty in collecting any of the money, have you? No, but there hasn't been an organized drive to raise money. Your, uh, your efforts have been some, uh, in some fields directed in another way. Uh, oh, yes. You have uh, done some other things. Uh, there's been some talk that you've uh, uh, been uh, looking over the congressional list to find out those who you think might be the proper uh, men to uh, carry out some of Eisenhower's program. Well, uh, I, I ought to say right now, uh, that uh, my position and uh, and uh, Congressman Scott's position too uh, has not been that mm -hmm. uh, we are not in any way assigned to that to that job by the administration uh, or the incoming administration. Uh, we are there uh, to do everything that has to be done for which our experience and, and you have uh, some ideas on qualifies. how the uh, uh, rapprochement <coughs> rapprochement between Taft and Eisenhower is going to work out. Uh, do you think it will be smooth? I have every confidence that. Uh, that uh, there will be a complete, completely harmonious uh, uh, operation between well, Senator Taft and, and Congress in general, well, and the President. Senate, uh, Congressman, since you have, since you are an original Eisenhower man, 
And since you've had all this experience in helping to prepare the way for the new administration, I'm sure that you can give our viewers some valuable hints as to what to expect when the show moves on down to Washington on the 20th. Now, sir, specifically, uh, is anything dramatic likely to happen uh, during the first few weeks after Eisenhower becomes president? Well, in the sense that I think your question implies no. Uh, there has been a very dramatic uh, happening extended over the period beginning uh, about 8.30 on uh, election day uh, and continuing right on now, and it's going to continue. But in the sense of, of, of dramatic and spectacular uh, moves, uh, I don't think that uh, that they are in the they in the wind. This is going to be a, a process which uh, uh, is a solid uh, accomplishment rather than a spectacular one. The war in Korea is not likely to end quickly, or taxes to be reduced drastically, or any New Deal legislation be repealed suddenly. Do you think that they'll? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Hewitt, I, I'm sure that the kind of thing that your question implies is not going to happen that way. I, I know, uh, in my, I have the deepest confidence that we are going to get the war in Korea ended sooner than we would otherwise. Uh, the taxes will come down sooner than otherwise they would. Uh, and that uh, sound legislative programs are going to be enacted and good things carried out and developed further. But I don't look for uh, a lightning stroke of the kind I think you mean. Yes. Well, there'll be differences, uh, uh, undoubtedly. Well, one of the differences, and the one one that I'm interested in, is the the uh, business uh, men who have uh, gone to Washington, er, well, gone to the Commodore, and will be going to Washington. Uh, do you think that their uh, organization of the of the executive branch of the government uh, will uh, improve and even save money for the government as a an operation? I'm sure that the administration uh, will do that, uh, and that the wisdom and ability uh, that, that the leaders from business whom Eisenhower is, is, is uh, putting in his cabinet and in his administration will be of, of great help in that direction, yes. Now, sir, who are the, who are the brain trusters of this new administration? Well, uh, that again implies that there's a little coterie of people behind the scenes who are running the show. Uh, and uh, I couldn't, uh, if, if there were such, and... Uh, and I knew about it, I wouldn't be able to say so. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't believe there is that kind of thing. And what I'm striking at, sir, and I'm trying to get at, uh, this has been billed as a new era. Something new is happening in Washington on January the 20th. For most people uh, now, most American adults, and for most people less than 50 years old, there's nothing like this has happened since 1932. That's right. That's right. Now, uh, can you illustrate for our viewers that what the difference is going to be between this new admin Republican administration and what we've had for the past 20 years? <clears throat> well, we've had for the past, at least the latter part of this 20 years, an administration that's been running down. An administration that, by the weight of its accumulated mistakes and, and the, the mere fact that it's been in office so long, has been getting slower and slower, grinding to a halt. And we now have, uh, uh, coming into office on the 20th of January, presaged by the uh, Republican Congress, which took office last Saturday, uh, an administration that is fresh and comes with vigor, with none of the handicaps or the barnacles that have attached to the old one, and with a complete dedication to the single purpose of doing the best possible job in foreign affairs and in domestic affairs, and no entanglements. What? And I, I, I have the greatest confidence that the results uh, which are expected are going to, to be realized. One of the problems that some people think that the Eisenhower administration will face, perhaps in 1953, is a, uh, a recession. Now, you have uh, said in your campaign speeches for re-election in New Jersey that uh, the Republican Party must do nothing to earn the, uh, uh, the title of the uh, uh, Depression Party or the Party of Privilege or the uh, indifference towards the uh, general public. Uh, Will they move uh, quickly if there's any sign of that? If there is any sign of that sort, uh, I am sure the administration will take all proper and necessary action. Uh, actually, in my talks uh, to which you refer, uh, I was talking about a reputation uh, rather than an actuality, mm -hmm. uh, something that, uh, uh, that had been successfully foisted on us uh, by certain branches of the Democratic Party uh, in many people's minds. And, uh, and I was pointing out we should not accept that, well, uh, and, and must not, and I'm sure we, we, we will not 
do anything to justify well, it. Well, Mr. Case, you are uh, a very influential New Jersey politician in your own right, sir. In a, in a very limited area. <laughs> and uh, from a very fine district. That's now, true. What, what have you promised your district to get them down there during this in this new Congress? I'm a very lucky congressman because mine is not a pork barrel district in any sense. We have no great public works that are desired and none that are there. Uh, you mean your district doesn't want anything? Well, my district wants, pardon me, this is not saying that it's got it, but it wants just good, solid representation, uh, which... They must think you are a uh, solid representation since you led Eisenhower in the, in the uh, uh, district by about 10,000 votes. Uh, I'm sorry, you started this. <laughs> <laughs> and let those facts speak for themselves. That was a little bit special, and there were special reasons for that. Would you accept the candidacy for governor? As some people uh, say that you were going to be offered that. Well, that would be a most flattering offer. I don't believe anybody in political life would turn it down. But I'd prefer to wait till it was offered before I say yes. Then. As a final question, sir, uh, uh, it, it's been said that the new administration is going to be weak on, uh, on politicians. It's going to have a lot of businessmen, but there aren't going to be any very experienced politicians in the administration itself. Now, do you think that there's going to be a shortage of politicians? No, not in the right sense. Uh, both in the, in, the, in the administration itself, in the executive side, uh, and of course in Congress, where we have experienced politicians, men from way back who know the trade, and properly. Uh, I, I am sure that we will get to we will have no difficulty in handling the political side of this thing in a proper well, way. Well, thank you very much for being with us this evening, sir. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight are entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and uh, Mr. Richard Waddell, management editor of Business Week magazine. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Clifford Case, United States representative from New Jersey. Discriminating people the world over find in Longines the qualities they seek in a very fine watch. Greater accuracy, for instance. Now, the record of Longines watches in observatory accuracy competitions is unexcelled. Over the years, Longines watches have established many records, won countless awards for individual watches and series of watches in the great observatories, Neuchâtel, Geneva, Washington, Hugh Teddington, and, of course, Longines is the only watch in history to win 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes and 28 Gold Medal Awards. If you, too, are interested in a watch of superior quality, either for yourself or as an important gift, you will choose well to choose Longines, the world's most honored watch. For a Longines watch offers you exclusive styling, impressive appearance, greater accuracy, and the assurance of a long, long life. Yet you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whittenor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is David Ross, reminding you that Longines and Whittenor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whittenor Watches. Sundays, it's Ed Sullivan's Toast of the Town on the CBS Television Network.